Okay, let's talk about uh, hard disk space. Who's got the hard disk? Pass that up here, would you? Real quick. I mean, I don't doesn't need to fly up here. I just meant I only need it for a second. All right. As we said, this is a typical size hard drive. Didn't used to be this size. The um, the um, ones we had in the early days were about. 10, 12 pounds, about this high, about this wide, about this deep, big one. I've got one in my lab if any of you are ever interested in seeing it, but they were huge hard drives, heavy. I mean, <laughs> that kind of heavy. They were heavy. All right. Um, anyway, so this is the size we're talking about now. Go ahead and continue passing that around. All right. Let's talk about where we've come in hard drives. The first hard drive, first of all, computers or PCs, the IBM compatible PC did not come with hard drives. We didn't have hard drives back then. What we had were two floppy drives. Uh, and in fact, they weren't the three and a half, they were the five and a quarter drives that probably none of you have seen. They were five, you've seen them? Have you seen them? Yeah, okay, they actually flopped. All right. So anyway, floppy drives, and uh, they hold uh, the first ones held like 180 kilobytes, almost nothing by today's standards, on both sides. Right. Um, but that's what we had in the early days: two floppy drives. One would have the, the software, and one would store our data. That would be it. And we'd put the operating system one in, and let it load the operating system, and then take that out, and then run our software. Oh, <laughs> terrible. All right. When I built my first computer, I bought a hard drive when they first came out. It was a five megabyte hard drive. Five megabyte, big thing, big, this, you know, heavy, big thing, five megabytes. In 1981 or 82, whenever it was, it cost me $700. By today's dollars, what is that? Two or three thousand dollars? So that's what a hard drive cost back then, and that was five megabytes. I can't think of anything small enough these days that has five megabytes. Even our smallest jump drives have, what, 256 megabytes. So that was ridiculous. But at the time, it was something. All right. Before too long, we went to 10 megabytes, 20 megabytes, 30, 50, and on and on and on and on. And um, we decreased in size very quickly. We went from that big drive to about the size. We had hard drives for a while that were size of the CD-ROM drives that got passed around. Hard drives used to be that size. And then finally, we came, we've come down to the three and a half inch drives that, you, uh, that is being passed around now. That's pretty much where we stayed. As I said, the laptop, laptop hard drives are about the uh, footprint size of a deck of cards and about half the thickness of a deck of cards. But as we were uh, saying earlier, uh, remember that um, hard, excuse me, laptop components, because of being smaller, they're generally uh, not as rugged. So uh, hard, um, and not only that, on the laptop hard drives, none of them are as large as what you can get for a desktop hard drive or the hard drive that you've got here. So the hard drives we've got today, um, typically uh, on, at home, I buy 500 gigabyte hard drives, gigabyte hard drives, quite a bit. I've got quite a few of those, and those are pretty cheap. I Last time I purchased a 500 gigabyte hard drive, I paid like uh, $75 for it. Um, I think the price break right now is about at 640 gigabytes. Um, um, when you go beyond that, it gets, starts getting up pretty pricey. Uh, but um, we also have two different types of hard drives. We have IDE and we have serial ATA or SATA drives. This is kind of the direction we're going now in industry, and this is where you can get larger hard drives. IDE is, I think, the largest you can get is a 500 gigabyte. Somebody told me about a 640 gigabyte IDE, but I, I haven't seen that for myself. Um, the SATA drives, we actually, uh, the largest I've seen now is one terabyte. I've actually seen a one terabyte drive. Um, they're not cheap, but that is amazing that in that same size that I was just passing around, we've got a full terabyte of data inside there. So that's where we are now. Serial ATAs are faster. Um, 
Uh, so you do get a lot better performance out of them, but IDE type drives, uh, again, I don't want to go into all the details, IDE, IDE is older. Uh, we're seeing more and more serial ATA drives uh, for uh, CD-ROM DVD drives and more and more hard drives. Matter of fact, I think you're kind of hard pressed to buy a new computer that has IDE in it. I just, I, I think it's cap they're all capable of running IDE, but most computers you buy now, if not all, uh, have a standard uh, serial drive in them. And serial drives are cheaper uh, these days, probably because they are selling more of them. But um, anyway, those are the sizes we've gotten up to. Uh, Anybody purchase a hard drive recently? No? Okay. Anyway, get an idea. About $75 is what I paid for what I paid for my 500 gigabyte drive. The the serial ATA 1 terabyte, I think you're looking at about $1200, $1500, something like that. Again, I don't remember exactly. Say again, please. We had like 150. 150 gigabyte? No, for 500 gigabyte. Oh, 150 for a 500 gigabyte? Wow, when did when did you where did you buy that? Wow, where did you get that? Apple. Ooh, okay, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I uh, um, the place I buy online a lot is uh, I hate to on video recommend anybody, but I'm really not really. I'm just letting you know where I buy them. But a place called Newegg. Anybody ever heard of them? Yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> Uh, they're fairly common. Buy.com does pretty well. Um, there's another place. Uh, say again? Comp USA. Um, Best Buy, of course. Um, there's another one. Tiger Direct. There's another one. Anyway, I've generally uh, pretty, I've got I, a lot of times I buy my components from uh, Newegg, but there are others I buy from as well. Okay, now. Is hard disk space critical? A lot of times people want to um, get the biggest possible hard drive they can get. Okay, fine. Go for the price break. We've got a tremendous amount of data on these drives. Remember what we're talking about on uh, these drives. Unless you're doing video editing, keep in mind that that's a lot of space. That's a lot of space on a hard drive. If you guys are getting into music, how many of you have a bunch of music songs stored on your computer? Quite a few of you. How big, how much space does one song take up, roughly? How much? All right, I was going to say three, but I'll buy five. Depends on the quality of the song and the length of the song. But that's close enough. Five megabytes. Well, if you have, if you have a thousand songs, what are you talking? Uh, five gigabytes for a thousand songs. That, that might do my math right. Something like that. Five thousand. Yeah, that's right. Five gigabytes. Um, if you have a thousand songs, I mean, a thousand songs is a lot, and five gigabytes is is a lot of space. Um, I mean, it's I mean, it's a lot of space. But when you consider the sizes we're talking about, if you have five gigabytes and you have a 500 gigabyte hard drive. I mean, you're talking about 10,000, uh, no, 100,000 songs, 100,000 songs. That's a lot of songs. So you have a lot of space on there. Don't think that you have to necessarily go out and buy the biggest hard drive. Find the price break, all right? When you're buying a new computer, look for the price break. Remember, hard drive is second only to RAM memory in ease of upgrading. It's very easy to upgrade a hard drive, or better yet, get a second hard drive for your computer. That's even easier. That's easier than adding RAM memory. You buy another hard disk and put it in your computer and you're done. So don't think you have to blow uh, your entire uh, uh, allowance or whatever it is on your uh, computer and spend half of that on the hard disk. You know, balance everything out. Think about the things you can't upgrade and spend your money there, like the central processing unit. All right. Um, so what, um, remember too that the hard drive, and when you think about it, the hard drive has nothing to do with the operation of the computer itself. Okay, fine, the hard disk contains the operating system and it contains the software, but when your computer is running, it's running from RAM, like we said before. Your hard disk is just sitting there. Yeah, periodically the automatic save comes in and it saves to the hard disk. But the hard drive really has not a lot to do with the operation of the computer. Yes. Yes, very good. I'm glad you brought that up. 
We also have, as he said and reminded me, we have different speeds of hard drives. Um, it used to be in the early days of uh, hard drives we had like uh, 300 revolutions uh, per minute. Uh, it's really slow. And, uh, but now, I think 4,000 revolutions per minute is about the slowest you get right now, and that's typically what you see on uh, most standard laptop hard drives. On most desktop hard drives, you're hitting around 5,400 RPM. And on pretty quick hard drives, you're going, you can get up to 7,000 RPM. That's what I have on my computers at home. And for a lot more money, you can go up to 10,000 RPM, which is really quick. And somebody told me that they saw a 15,000. I have not seen that with my own eyes, but I am told that there is a 15,000 RPM out there. That is quick. So that little disk inside that hard disk is whipping around like crazy. Um, and uh, that buys you a lot of speed. Um, one thing to consider too, sometimes the speed doesn't work as well as we'd like. Remember, the faster it goes, the, um, the, 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 the harder the hard drive has to work and the more things, uh, the hotter things get. Generally, the hard disks are better built so they can handle the higher speeds. But remember, inside the hard disk, you have this little arm that's moving in and out, reading the hard drive. So it's doing this kind of a thing throughout the entire operation of the hard disk. When it's moving that fast, something happens uh, called, um, I think it's called skipping, where it should, when, as the hard drive spins, on every revolution, the arm should be reading the information as it comes around. But sometimes the arm can't read or get to the location of the data as fast as the hard drive can spin and so you lose if it has to spin a second time what have you dropped down to on a 10,000 you've dropped down to 5,000 rpm for that one single second but still you get the idea that sometimes the speed can actually work against you yes what would you need like 15,000 rpm Hi. <laughs> I don't know, somebody who's, you know where I would put that is probably on a server. That's the only thing I can think of because obviously a server is holding data for a lot of people and that hard drive is being accessed by a great many people at one time. For a home computer, even computers like this, I can't think of a reason in the world why you'd need 15,000 RPM. Server's the only thing I can think of. Yes, sir. Is direct drive or is that gear reduction? Oh, it's a direct drive. It's spinning that motor that Oh, yeah. Holy yeah, yeah. There, I've got one in my lab you can see. So, yes. Oh, very good. Solid state uh, hard disks. Um, new technology, the only computer I'm aware of right now that has solid state hard drive is the, um, the uh, Mac Airbook, I think it's called. Anyway, that ultra thin one. What solid state is, essentially, it's RAM memory. Instead of a hard drive, it has RAM memory. Well, the upside of that is that it accesses really fast. There is none of that uh, skipping possibility. Uh, your hard drive can't go bad. There's no motors, no servos, no arms moving. But the downside is that it costs a lot more for every gigabyte of hard disk space, quote unquote, or solid state hard disk. It costs a lot more than your typical hard disk. So you are getting better speed, better performance, but it's a lot more expensive. So a solid state hard disk is nothing but a different form of RAM memory for your hard disk. Okay? All right. That's an important point. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. 